In the previous video, we introduced the idea of adding in a constant that would help complete the square, meaning it would allow the left side of the equation to be rewritten to a perfect square trinomial, which from here on out is going to be our goal. So when we're solving an actual equation and we actually need to use completing the square, we rewrite so that we just have an a coefficient of 1. This is a really big deal here. So we have it when a equals 1 and our b term with x on the left side or constant on the right. Of course, moving terms around will do this just fine. Please keep in mind that the coefficient for x squared has to be 1. If it's not 1, how we can work around that is by dividing everything by that a coefficient. So we then add in the completing the square term, the constant, or eventually what becomes the constant, to each side of the equation. And I'll underline this in blue because I think it's really important. And you'll see that there are lots of steps here. So I'll refer to this as I move through it. And then pretty much from here on out, this is the same song and dance, which is an infamous Frank Sinatra song. So if you want to YouTube that, complete these, maybe that'll help you get through the last three steps. And we're almost done this, so kudos to you for sticking with me. All right, so our goal, again, is to try and have x squared plus bx equals c. So if we take a look at this, what can we move to the other side to try and get towards our goal? Because we want to keep x squared and our x term on the same side. What can we move along? So hopefully you're saying that you would move the 3 over to the other side, getting you here. 3x squared plus 18x, where this now equals 3. And how could we go about getting rid of this 3? Because keep in mind, if our a coefficient's not 1, we need to do something. So what can we do? Well, divide all the terms of the equation, duh. Our a coefficient here was 3, but if we divide all the terms by positive 3, this now takes us to x squared plus 6x, and this equals 1. So notice that factoring is kind of out the window at this point, because if we were going to move this over, we would have a trinomial that's very difficult to factor. So completing the square, as we can see, is pretty nice. So from here on out, same song and dance for the most part, getting the constant that we need, which would be b over 2 being squared, in this case, it's 6, so we should have 6 over 2 being squared. So pretty much 3 squared, which is the actor formerly known as 9. As mentioned in the steps, we need to add this to each side of the equation. So we're going to add that to the left, to the left, yes, Beyonce. And also to the right. So we're adding that here, we're adding that here, 1 and 9 gets us 10. And so now it's the same song and dance as we saw in the previous set of problems. So this is x plus 3 being squared. This equals 10. If we take square roots for both sides, we're left with x plus 3 equals plus or minus root 10. And if we take this further, deducting 3 on both sides, we get our two answers in disguise. So. If you want to go for the decimal of this, go for it. But our two answers seen here are going to be 3 plus the square root of 10 or 3 minus the square root of 10. All done. Lots of steps. Definitely a newer type of problem that we've seen. I don't think we've seen one where we actually change around the term. Usually we're just shifting terms around, factoring. So this is the first one where you actually have to add in something to both sides, which I think is pretty cool. I'll give you a moment for this next one. Pause it, give it a shot, make sure it seems okay. Nothing wrong with trying these problems out. So again, as mentioned before, our goal is to have x squared 
plus bx equals c. We can definitely go and start that by moving x to the other side, keeping 2x squared here, but now subtracting 2x. If we move this 3 over to here, this is now equal to 6. We divide all of the sides by 2. Super crucial step. We're left with x squared minus x equals 3. <coughs> If we go from here, our constant b over 2 being squared is going to be negative 1 over 2. Is that right? Yeah. Did I do this right? Pretty sure I did. Yeah. b is negative 1. And then we're going like that. Yeah, I got this. Okay, so if we square this, negative one half being squared, this is going to be one fourth. Cool. So if we actually have this in the frame, sorry about that. So if we add one fourth to both sides, we have x squared minus x plus one fourth equals three and one fourth. Camera work on this is awful, my apologies. So the left side, we can actually factor this to x minus 1 half being squared. It's an awful problem, I think. You won't see too much like this, but it can be done. We take square roots on both sides. x equals eventually positive 1 half and then plus or minus the square root of, I'll rewrite this as an improper fraction. So this would be root 13 over root 4, but I'm just going to write 2. <coughs> so our answer here could be 1 plus root 13 all over 2, or again I'm combining because these are the same denominator. We could have 1 minus root 13 over 2. One answer two answers. We'll practice this in class and we'll also see these additional problems on how we can go from standard form to vertex form. That's usually a good time.